Mr. Speaker, foreign members, throughout the course of these hollow chambers, whenever motions of such a nature comes off, we are addressing the symptoms rather than the cause of this problem of insecurity that has consumed the whole of this country like a monster. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, just like Honorable Inanna, sorry, Inanna, said in the course of our submissions that by 2050, we will be the third most populous country in the world. It's a fact because of the fact that our population is growing at a geometric progression, while correspondingly, our infrastructure and our ability to create employment for this, our teaming unemployed youth is growing at arithmetic progression. And the only sector that we can invest hugely with a view to creating employment for this teaming and employed use is agriculture. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, as I'm speaking to you right now, even having regard, having looked at the 2019 budget, the 107 billion naira that was allocated to agriculture is a drop in the ocean. <laughs> if we are going to really walk the talk of the preaching, the gospel of diversification of Nigeria's economy away from oil to agriculture. Because it is only through huge investment in agriculture that we can create employment to our team in unemployed youths. So there is need for the government to come off with a deliberate policy of investing a lot in agriculture by way of training and empowerment of our youths and women that constitute 70% of our population and also are not employed so that they can have means of livelihood and then turn away from this problem of uh, kidnapping, armed robbery, and what have you. So there is a need for us as a parliament, though we have already passed the 2019 budget, subsequently the incoming parliament, those of us that will be privileged to be in the ninth assembly, to take the bull by the horn and increase the budget of agriculture, at least in tandem with the Maputo Declaration that urges all African countries to devote at least 10% of their national budget to agriculture so that we can create employment for our teaming unemployed youths. In fact, it is in our enlightened self-interest to do that. If we didn't do that, there will be a time when all of us can go to our constituency. Those of us in the Northeast, we have already started facing that because I cannot go to my constituency now unless I am escorted with two armored vehicles. The last time I'm going to my constituency, I was escorted with two armored vehicles, one in the front, one in the back, before I can go to my constituency. So if care is not taken, there will be a time all of us that we are calling ourselves the ruling class of this country or the so-called elites, if care is not taken, and this ugly scenario is not nipped in the bud. I'm telling you there will be a time when you are sleeping in your house. You cannot sleep with your two eyes closed. People will come and take you away. So it is in our enlightened self-interest. Right now in Medjugorje, that is even safer to my constituency. You cannot go around with a jeep. Or you cannot go around with a plastic car. By the time you go and stop somewhere, you will see a lot of youths coming to say, you say, guys, say, guys, you have to give them something. 
So it is in our enlightened self-interest to invest in agriculture because agriculture has the capacity to engage this youth and then create employment for themselves, even in our own enlightened self-interest. Thank you. Okay.